If this looks like a dream, it's because it is. True remote wilderness, the heart of the boreal forest. One of the few places left on this great earth that is still untouched by man, where the fires and animals roam free in perfect synergy. This is a Woodland Caribou Story. So when I say this is a dream, it truly was one of mine. I used to do a job that required me to do a lot of international traveling, much bigger planes, much further destinations, very different food, and many more people. And all I could do was dream about being in the wilderness. On one of these flights, I was listening to the Paul Curley podcast featuring Ray Goodwin, and they were talking about a canoe trip that started in Northern Ontario. The idea of flying into the remote wilderness by float planes seemed like a dream I needed to chase. I just didn't think it would happen so soon. One year later, here I am, living my own dream. But before we go any further, let's take it back a step and show you just how remote this place is. We're based at Olive Lake Eco Lodge in Woodland Caribou Park. To get here, we took a float plane for 25 minutes that was set up for us by Red Lake Outfitters. We got to Red Lake by driving seven hours from Thunder Bay. We got to Thunder Bay by taking a two hour commercial flight from Toronto. But let's start the story in Red Lake because that's where it gets exciting. Nick and his wife Cher used to live out here. They were looking for a reason to come back, and they couldn't have found a better couple to show their secret paradise to. The Timbers were stoked for this adventure. As Caitlin looks out over all of Lake to the west, there is nothing but lakes and forest for the next 300 kilometers. That's 180 miles of wilderness. Lots of exploring to do, but first things first, we need to go catch some dinner. Oh, that's a beauty. Wow, nice fish. How many have you caught already? Five. Nick caught one little baby. I caught one this big. We could have caught way more, but yeah. <laughs> we got enough. 
With our fish supply stocked for a few days, it was time to go chase the sunset, letting the calls of the animals dictate our direction of course. This is the first moment that I truly grasped just how remote we were. It's likely these animals have never seen humans before. A beaver splashes his tail in warning to the other animals that we could be dangerous. Looks like we have our work to do if we truly want to become part of nature. Home in the boreal, where the moose and the caribou show. I call this my home, the bears want my dome, and the wolves won't leave me alone. <laughs> Isn't it pretty? So pretty. So nice. Nick, can you tell us why we're screaming out here? Sometimes you have to be the animal that you are. And no one can hear you out here, so you might as well do it here. Seven like echoes. Awesome. Seven echoes on that one. That was awesome. Yell. Yeah. No, I'm not going to scream. Yeah, yeah. scream. Scream. I think you outdid Nick. Oh my god, that I think, was. I think like, she outscreened Nick. Good. That was like out of a horror movie. <laughs> Shine like, a light on her. That was the way. Who oh. did that? Who's who? Yeah. Who's responsible yeah. for that? Eleven echoes. You're an screen. animal. <laughs> After a night of drinking on the deck and screaming our lungs out, I knew we needed a little oil in the belly, so we cooked up a morning feast. So here we have clear wolf tracks on the beach and right here you can tell that it's pushed in more and this is up so it jumped and by the angle I'm guessing it jumped off this log and over this bush straight in and running down the beach. We have some resident wolves with us. So from this log coming this way along the log over that tree the shrubbery and then landing here. And then I'm running along this beach. Yesterday we were following wolf track and uh, we seen a baby bear come out and it started running towards us so we thought, alright, let's, let's uh, head back. <laughs> this is day two of fresh wolf tracks on our beach. The days were often filled with a casual sense of exploration. With the Eco Lodge as our home base, we didn't really have to be concerned about making it to certain destinations each day. We just roamed wherever our curiosity took us. The canoe is such an incredible way of traveling these vast lands. As it slips through the water in silence, the sound of your paddle critiques your every stroke. It took me many years to appreciate the brilliance and beauty of the canoe, but it's not a realization that I will let float away on me. I suspect this is only the dawn of my fascination with the canoe and the places it will take me. For a group, a couple, or a roaming solo, the canoe is the best way to explore the boreal forest. Baja fish tacos. <laughs> Taco Tuesday. Fresh walleye from the lake. 
This natural sand beach leaves us clues of the past. As we enjoy a refreshing swim, I can't help but think about how did it get here? What natural occurrences caused it thousands of years ago? So much I have yet to learn, but for now, we'll just enjoy another one of nature's wonderful gifts. So you might be wondering, what would we do for four hours on an island? Nice. Did you get your hook? Yeah, and then it started off. Right now we're going to make a wild boreal tea and to start we're going to use spruce tips. So in here we have Labrador tea. It's also very high in vitamin C. The next morning we got company. Well, technically we're the company. Harlan, who owns all of Lake Eco Lodge, came by to hang out for a day. I took this opportunity to get him to tell us a little more about this place and the forest we're surrounded by. Back in 2008, I was looking for, for just uh, true wilderness and just a place to escape to. And I found this beautiful area, Red Lake, Ontario. And truly in, in Red Lake, you know, with Woodland Caribou Provincial Park so close, um, it was a spot to be. So in 2008, I, I moved up here and uh, in 2010 started Red Lake Outfitters and 
make a new outfitting and then gradually moved up to our, our eco lodge which we spent a couple years in the planning stages of and it's a place for everybody to come and relax whether it's single guys or, or a group for fishing or if it's just a couple there's something for everybody here you got endless solar power no use of a generator uh, you got hot and cold running water on demand hot water which is unique uh, it's the first place in the region to have that uh, for an outpost cabin so you're never going to run out of hot water you got indoor showers um, you got everything that, that you could want. You got satellite Wi-Fi, satellite TV, you got, uh, you could be watching Netflix if you want. The park's 1.2 million acres in size, so to wrap your head around that, I mean, it's, uh, it's hard. It's, it's massive. Thousands of lakes, um, you know, over 2,200 campsites throughout. Two main watersheds, the Gammon River watershed centrally located in the park in the world famous Canadian Heritage River, the Blood Vein River uh, watershed in the north end. Those are the two main drainages, but epic lake trout, walleye, northern pike fishing. Uh, you could spend 90 days up here and still not paddle the same waters. There is no development, there is no mining or logging operations upwind or downriver, upriver. It, it just doesn't happen in this park, everything's natural. So the water here is about as clean as you're going to find anywhere in Ontario. The landscape is, uh, it's raw, it's wilderness, and it's still being used by First Nations to this day. So there's, uh, there's always a chance of seeing a trap route here, uh, whether it's in the winter or, or in the summer. So this is pure boreal forest here. It's, it's a fire-driven ecosystem, and, and everything is, is all about fire here. So if you look down the lake right across from us, while we were building, we actually had a forest fire from a lightning strike. So what we have is a true jack pine and black spruce forest. Uh, everything's in different stages of succession coming up, different age groups. So across the lake here, burned two years ago, just off to, uh, to the east here, we have, uh, it was all wind blown from, from 10 years ago. We have a fire area just by the, by the north here that, that burned 20 years ago and it's all even aged jack pine there. So the dynamic up here and then the really neat thing about this area is that no matter where you're traveling over the course of a day you could be going through a brand new burn to a 20 year old burn to a 50 year old burn to old growth and old growth for us is about 100 years that's about the life cycle of the, the jack pine and about the, what the fire cycle is up here. Jack pine needs fire to seed. Um, basically if, if you look at a jack pine cone uh, it's armored shut and that only gets released with heat. So if you took one up to a campfire and, and put it in the fire over about a 30 second period, you'll actually watch it open up. So this forest needs heat and, and fire to reseed. So because we have shallow soils in this boreal forest, we are susceptible to wind and, and heavy snows. These trees come down all the time. If you walk through our forest, there's tons of blowdown everywhere. That just creates the fuel for that next forest fire to come by, clean up everything, reseed, and the forest grows again and that's that's pretty much the cycle so you'll always see blowdown up here and that's healthy that's that's what this area is all about as things reseed as some of the birch and the poplars and alders start coming up you get tons of moose browse you get lots of new um, browse and, and food for all the little critters in the, in the true boreal forest and the animals here are accustomed to it they've evolved to uh, to being part of this fire driven landscape so it's just all part and parcel of it uh, lots of mosses Lots of interesting mushrooms and, and lichens. Obviously we have woodland caribou in the park and they're feeding on the lichen. Um, but just an incredible understory in the forest. Uh, true prairie boreal forest. It's, it's unlike really any other area in the Ontario park system and, and it's why we call it home. Super cool, we're standing here, right? Yeah. What is this? Whoa. It's been gnawed on, it looks like a caribou oh. shed. It's big, actually. It is. That is so cool. That, that is so sick. I'm just gonna pull it out yeah. here. It's it's in pretty good. So what's happened here over the years? This root has actually grown around it. Look at that. Wow. And you can see here, this is from mice over the years gnawing away all these straight marks. I can't actually pull this out. You want to hold that for a second? I can't physically get this out without a lot of effort. Okay. Well, I have a little saw you want saw it. So, that's so cool. Good. That is so Hi, cool. This is the true story of the Olive Lake Eco Lodge too. It's 
it's true wilderness. You never know what you're gonna see. Treasures are hidden. This, this caribou shed with the moss on it, I mean, this could be 20 years old. Just sitting there waiting for somebody to walk by and recognize it. And we're possibly, possibly the first people to ever walk by here. Yeah. yeah. Probably the first people to ever walk by. We're about a kilometer or so yeah. behind the cabin. That's super cool. Absolutely super cool. This shed actually comes down there. Wow. Who knows how long this was here. Look at the moss on it. This has been buried for probably decades. Protected, you can see it wasn't chewed. The areas that were exposed are all chewed out. It's a piece of woodland caribou history right there. Ain't that cool? unnamed lake and we are possibly the first people to ever come here. We just push push for over a kilometer Ooh. and water is on the horizon. Wow, he's right. We made it guys. Nice. This is awesome. If you don't mind. And look, I haven't seen one of these yet. That's a tamarack. tamarack. Three months from now this will be bright yellow. Yeah, so we just hiked about, I don't know, I'd say about a kilometer. Actually, it's probably about two kilometers with all the zigzags. We literally bushwhacked through the boreal, through blowdown, up rock ledges, so no straight lines here. And uh, we arrived at this lake, maybe about 100 meters down, and we just kind of walked this shoreline just to explore it a little and see. So this is Timber Lake. It was unnamed before we got here, but we're putting it on the map. It's Timber Lake. Officially, as of what day is it? Doesn't matter. <laughs> so, I wanted a sense of adventure, and I got it. I was hiking with Harlan and uh, Nick and Caitlin. They were sticking to some low ground, and I wanted to get up some high ground to get a better view and see if we could get moving faster. By the time I got to the top, I didn't know where they were. I blew my whistle, heard nothing back, I've been yelling. So I've been walking now for about 20 minutes and I've got nothing to go on but the sun. It was very responsible of me. I should have waited. I tried to make sure I keep them in sight and all of a sudden they were gone. Okay. This is my days off. So I found the rest of the crew. One in particular isn't very happy with me. She got her back to me here. But uh, can you tell me how long I was gone for and what you were thinking? Like half an hour that you were an idiot. Number one rule is that you don't lose your pack. Crew, you lose your crew. And we missed you, buddy. They missed me. We, we yeah, definitely missed you. I was definitely happy to hear your voice once again after that long break of silence. It was good though. We we got to sit down for half an hour and yeah. get to know each other. We followed pro protocol. We yeah. stayed still. Yeah. We did the right thing. I thought I went back to where we lost each other, but apparently number two rule. Uh, number one, one there. rule: stay together. Yeah. I was like, I could hear him. It was fine. I could literally see you guys. And the next thing I know, it's Marco in silence. Yeah. Once you went <laughs> and to that the was ridge, your voice. But even then, and the wind was just taking like. Yeah. A here's job. here's the note because what what. The, the reason it got dangerous because we both assumed we were playing games on each other. Yeah, yeah. I thought they weren't responding to like mess with me, and they thought I wasn't responding to mess with them. But we, when you're out in the boreal, for any forest for that matter, you don't play games with anybody. Because no. you can quickly, quickly get lost and disappear. And that was 30 seconds I saw yeah. you, and then it was, yeah. I just couldn't hear you. Like, Cause we the, could hear you so faintly, and then more faint, yeah. faint The gone. wind is blowing, rustling the trees, the birds sound like whistles, and you can't decipher human sounds from bears cracking branches behind you. Even timber can get lost in the forest. I wasn't lost. 
I was just couldn't find them. I was on my way home, but I was lost and I got scared for a little bit. We were lost without you. Yeah. Tonight we go here. Well, today we did this hike. <laughs> yeah. You guys did this kind of thing, yeah. and I did this. I was really gonna come out ahead. I really. Think. Despite only being separated from the group for half an hour, it was a lesson I don't plan on ever having to learn again. Thankfully, I had a compass and was able to navigate myself in the correct general direction until we eventually crossed paths. Let go slowly. Okay. Oh. Woodland caribou gold right there. That's what everyone's looking for. Awesome stuff. Fight it, girl, fight it. side lip. You can just kind of wiggle that out. There she is. Back in the water she goes. Done and done. Have you ever met someone and just known right from the beginning that you're going to be fast friends? Believe it or not, this is only the fourth time Nick and I have hung out. Caitlin and Cher had never actually even met before this trip. Caitlin and I have always done our adventures alone but it sure is nice finding another couple who enjoys remote living as much as we do. When you spend as much time paddling into the wilderness alone as Caitlin and I do, we often wonder if we're running away or if it's nature that's calling us in. Sharing this experience with Nick and Cher took me a little further down the road of answering that question for myself. It is definitely nature that's pulling us in, and having more like-minded people to share these experiences with only makes it feel better. Nick and I were pleased that the ladies got along so well, but it didn't take long for them to start picking on us boys when we couldn't catch a fish this one night in front of the dock. After losing the only fish we hooked up, the chirping from the spectators on the dock about our ability to catch fish only increased. The ladies decided that they were going to show us how it's done, and we traded spots. Not the worst trade in the world. After a bit of rest and relaxation, it was time to make something.
It's been pretty windy on this lake. It's facing the west and the wind usually is coming from the west. So I thought since Trust and Timmer made these nice benches, I'd contribute and create a firewall. So essentially this will block the wind and it'll create a backdraft that will lift the smoke up and out of our faces and uh, it'll keep us from setting the forest on fire with all the wind and sparks. Welcome to our humble abode. Whoa, what the hell? You made this? Uh, Nick made the wall. I just made a video of him making it. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Today we walked on land that may have never been walked on by another human being before. And we got to look at nature completely untouched by man. When else you get that opportunity? Being out here in the wild, it just erases the noise of everyday modern life. And it just reminds you of how the world should be. I know magic really exists because I've seen it in the boreal forest. My wife and I have been so lucky to travel and we've seen so many unreal things. When you travel to a remote wilderness through solidarity, you discover your true self. <laughs> 